This is Tiny Drive, a purpose-built add-on to your N20 and similar motors, which integrates a super efficient motor driver, LEDs to indicate motor movement, and easy to solder PCB pads. Now you might be wondering, why did I make this and what problem does it actually solve? Well, I don't know if it's just me being a complete noob, but anyone who's tried to solder one of these has probably experienced something like this. And for the last two years, building projects with N-series gear motors for things like line followers, sumo robots, ant weights, and pretty much anything that was small and needed to move, I've wanted to make something that made soldering easier and allowed me to move the motor driver off the main board onto the actual brushes. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I designed it, some practical applications of it, and lastly, how you can get these boards for yourself from this channel's sponsor, PCB way. This is just one of the many upcoming projects on this channel that for my goal of making tech more feature packed, efficient, and smaller. So if that's what you'd like to see, you might as well just subscribe or something like that. For me, the first step of any new project is to get distracted, whether that be working on another project or during English class. And after finding some really powerful N20s while scrolling through AliExpress, it suddenly hit me that there's no reason why the space below and above the brushes of the motor can't be exploited. So I quickly began selecting my components. So let's start with the motor driver, the star of the whole system. As you all know, when the resistance of the transistors inside an H-bridge is less, there is less heat dissipated which means you can drive more current in a smaller package. Another thing that helps with heat is thicker and shorter wires connecting to the actual silicon chip inside. And you can think of this like liquid cooling your PC with thick tubes the size of arteries versus these thin pieces of crap. Obviously, the artery sized tubes will work way better. After choosing the right motor driver, I had to put some protection on to make this thing more robust. Because if a DC motor stops too quickly, it'll dump all its energy back into where it came from just as quick in the form of high voltage spikes, which the motor driver isn't exactly a fan of. This is where the TVS diode comes in. It absorbs excess energy by almost becoming a short circuit at voltages above its clamping voltage. The opposite applies too. The motor takes a lot of current to start, so I chose some capacitors to help with that. Then I chose the LEDs and used some dimension diagrams of every N20 I could find to make the schematic and PCB design that night being sure to add an option to disable the LEDs for low power applications, as well as large, easy to solder through hole pads for the motor brushes before sending it off to PCB Way, your one-stop shop for all your prototyping and manufacturing needs, like PCBs, PCB assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and even more at great prices. They also have a design contest going on right now where you can win some awesome prizes and even a big Christmas sale, so there's no better time than now to use my link in the description to sign up and make your designs reality. Two weeks later, the boards came in these panels of four, which I broke into their individual pieces. I was delighted to see that it fits perfectly onto the motor brushes, so I fired up the soldering iron and got to work. After verifying that the board works with an Arduino Nano, it was time for some thermal imaging with my new Infrared P2 Pro, which my aunt and grandparents paid for as a gift for leaving high school and starting uni. The version I got is only compatible with Android though, and my whole family uses iPhones, so I picked up this brand new $88 phone using my birthday money, whose only purpose in life is to interface with a thermal camera. I also got this new toy recently, a smart battery charger which can also be used as a power supply. When the super powerful N20 had no load, the tiny drive stayed at about 28 degrees Celsius, which is only slightly above room temperature here in Australia. Here I'm jamming the gearbox with the insulation from a wire, and after the motor stalled, the tiny drive reached about 130 Celsius before settling at around 120 Celsius. A little hotter than I would have liked, but there wasn't any damage, even after stalling for like 30 seconds. I also soldered up this monstrosity with a TB6612 and it stayed at around 27 Celsius under no load. And at stall, 150 Celsius is crazy, but it quickly settled down to 75 Celsius. You have to keep in mind that the tiny drive is at a significant disadvantage here when it comes to heat, because the motor generates a lot of heat itself at stall. 
Now, it was time to make a robot to actually demonstrate how great Tiny Drive is. So I used an STM32H5 breakout off AliExpress, as well as one of my recycled 18650 cells to build a sumo robot. Since this was my first STM32 project, it took about a full business week to code, only for me to realize that A, my coding logic is poop, and B, having a single ultrasonic sensor kind of sucked because there's no way for the robot to sense direction. And yeah, I could have tried to use a multi-zone time of flight sensor, but the setup to be able to do this with an STM32 cube IDE was just so daunting, I decided not to. So if you guys have any tips for using time of flight sensors with custom STM32 hardware, please leave them in the comments below. As an alternative to testing out the sumo robot functionality, I decided to test the motor power by pushing weights with the robot, and it was looking pretty good up until about 1 kilo. My ant weight, which weighed slightly less, could barely push this much, so unsurprisingly, my first go at pushing 2 kilos failed, so I made some very slight modifications. The second attempt also failed, which made me kind of angry, so I added this thin piece of paper to try to get under the box better. At this point, the real issue was traction and also the right wheel constantly falling off, but once I placed the 2 kilo weight slightly further towards the back of the box, it was able to tip it over, and I would totally count that because that is totally the same as pushing it. If you guys want to get a hold of these boards for yourself, just click the related link in the description and follow the instructions in the description of the PCBWay project to buy the boards and help support my channel. Keep in mind, Tiny Drive only works with motors of these specifications, and this is the pinout. Merry Christmas, and thanks so much to PCBWay for all these for all these awesome gifts, look at that.